Good afternoon, gardeners. It's Sunday, November 14th, and it is a gorgeous fall day here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And today, I'm going to share with you 10 different varieties of figs for you to build a complete comprehensive collection around that will allow you to harvest fresh figs for as long as six months every single year. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. For those of you that follow this channel, you know that I own 50 different varieties of figs and you can see many of them spread out all over right behind me. Now, many of you have asked me over the years, why do you own so many figs? And the answer I'm going to give you is because I think figs are possibly the most diverse fruit on earth. If you own 10 different varieties of apples, there's going to be differences between the varieties, but they're all going to taste similar like an apple. Same thing with oranges. You can have 10 different varieties of oranges, but at the end of the day, they all taste similar like an orange. That's not the case with figs. I can have 10 different varieties of figs that taste absolutely nothing alike. And if you're having a blind taste test and you're not too familiar with figs, you would swear they were all different fruits. So that's why I collect so many more varieties of figs than I do any other fruit. Now also over the years, many of you have asked me, what are my favorite varieties of figs? And that is another question I don't like answering because it's so subjective. It's based on your taste, it's based on your climate. What will do well for you and that you'll enjoy is so unique to you. Now I realize many of you do not want to collect dozens of figs. It's just far too many for the average gardener. So what I've done is I have sat down and I've put together a list of 10 different varieties of figs that you can build an entire collection around, where if you have all 10 of these figs, you can pretty much call it quits and say, I have incredible diversity and there's no need for me to go out and buy any other varieties. I'm happy with what I have. And I've based this on three different criteria. Number one, I chose varieties of figs that ripen from very early to middle to late. So you can have harvests all the way from June until November as long as your climate allows and you have a fairly long frost-free season. Number two, I chose all varieties that taste nothing alike. I didn't want any varieties to have significant overlap, so you will look forward to all 10 of these varieties and not have anything really redundant. And number three, I chose all varieties that are fairly common or have become fairly common, and you're not going to have a terribly hard time chasing them down and they won't cost you an arm and a leg. All 10 of these varieties have become fairly ubiquitous in the community, and it's not too hard to find them when cuttings go on sale or on places like figbid.com. But one more time, before I give you the 10 varieties, I want you to be aware that figs require a long, warm summer to ripen most varieties. If you live in a place with short, cooler summers, you may not be able to ripen all of these. So that's why I'm going to give you the approximate ripening dates. You may not be able to collect all 10 of these if you live in a short summer climate. So let the dates I'm going to give you be your guide and you can stop probably somewhere in the middle of the list. Now throughout this video, you'll see me consulting my phone because I wrote down in my phone the 10 varieties that I'm recommending as well as the dates. And I wanna make sure that I get everything right for you. And it's important to note that the dates that I'm giving you will be to the first ripe fig, not when you'll be harvesting most of the crop. So this is uh, the dates I give you is when you can expect that very first ripe fruit to be picked off your tree. And the first variety that I'm going to give you that is a must grow is Celeste. And while Celeste is not the most exciting fig in terms of taste it is incredible with earliness in the deep south you can be harvesting figs off of this tree as early as mid-june maybe even early june for me this is a late june early july fig so this is a great way where you can extend your fig season as far as 30 days early on the front of the season if you live in the Northeast, July figs are very possible off of this tree. And the other amazing thing about this variety is it is probably the most rain resistant variety that exists. This is the most popular variety that's planted in the South because of our heavy summer rains and it holds up better than any of my other figs. So while they're small and they're not incredibly complex in flavor, they are incredibly reliable and that's why I grow Celeste. 
Now, as for the flavor profile, these taste like light brown sugar. They're known as a sugar fig. They're not incredibly molasses-like like dark brown sugar is, but they have a really nice, deliciously sweet light brown sugar flavor, and it's a real treat to have after a long, cold winter and a fairly chilly spring. You'll be getting these figs before any of your other figs ripen. The second variety that you must have in this collection is Ron de Bordeaux. Ron de Bordeaux is one of the earliest ripening berry figs that you can have, and the flavor is much more intense than Celeste. This is truly a delicious fig. Now for me, Ron de Bordeaux ripens generally here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina in early to mid-July. However, it has been known to ripen as early as late June in points further south or in places that don't get frost or freeze, whereas in the northeast, this can still ripen for you in July. So this is one of those fail-safe figs that you can get a really strong harvest out of, possibly even harvest the entire tree if you live in mid-Atlantic regions. It's really early and it's really delicious. I'm giving this a flavor profile of a resin molasses berry. So if you can imagine something like a blackberry raspberry with uh, molasses tones, almost like a burnt caramel taste, it's really delicious, it's really complex, and it's quite strong when it is properly ripened. So I strongly recommend that every grower have this one in its collection. The third fig tree that you must have in your collection is one that I've been singing the praises of for years, and that's because it's oh so common and it's oh so reliable, and that is Olympian. I love the Olympian fig. It's been almost bulletproof here, even in my rainy, buggy climate, and it does fantastic for me in early summer. Now, here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, you can expect your first fig off of this tree probably in late July, right around August 1st. However, it's not unlikely that you can get it a little bit earlier than that. I think I was picking off this tree in July this past season. Now, bear in mind, if you live in points further south, you may be able to get this, uh, this producing main crop in mid-July, maybe even slightly earlier. Uh, if you live in the northeast, this is probably going to be a, an August harvest for you. However, you will get ripe figs off of this tree in the peak of your summer heat, as August is usually the best month for figs in the Northeast. So if you live in a cooler climate, this is a must have. It also has a nice braba crop for people in the Pacific Northwest that struggle to ripen main crop figs. I don't grow for braba, I don't know too much about them, but it's named after Olympia, Washington, because that is where the mother tree came from, and it's a well-known, wonderful performer in Washington State. Now, as for the flavor, this is an English brown turkey type, and it tastes like peaches. This is the only variety that I have in my collection that tastes like peaches. It's so unique, it's like a slice of a nicely ripened peach dipped in honey. So, very unique fig. It's a must-have in your collection to get that unique flavor profile that most other figs don't have. The fourth must-have fig to complete any collection is Negra de Agde. And this tree was an absolute knockout for me this year. Uh, it did just phenomenally well, and it put out amazing tasting fruits. Now, Negra de Agde was one of my most rain-resistant figs, if not the most rain-resistant next to Celeste. Very impressed with it. I was able to eat almost every single fig off of this tree, and they did not spoil. Now, for me, this was a late July to or, uh, early August uh, tree for me to get my first fig off of. I anticipate points further south can get a mid-July harvest off of this, and this will fit nicely in that August ripening season for people in the northeast or in the midwest, right when you get that peak heat. Now, the thing I really liked about this tree is that the flavor profile was unique to any of my other varieties. This is the only fig tree that I have that tastes like cherries. I would say the figs taste like some type of a cherry syrup. Just absolutely delicious, very unique, nice and jammy inside. This is a must-have, especially for places with shorter summers or that get rain in their summers like I do. The fifth must-have fig tree on my list is the Carr fig tree. That's spelled C-A-R-R. -R. It's a wild tree from central to northern California, and it's named that because it was almost consumed by the Carr fire uh, two or three years ago at this point. Uh, it was spared from the fire, it just missed it. And this is what I would call a Black Mission type fig, as in it's very similar to Black Mission. It's probably in its lineage somewhere. 
Uh, it has very nice large fruit. You can see there's still a few hanging on here. And this is one of my mid-season figs, and it has a great size of up to about 60 grams. Now for me, I can expect this fig to ripen for me somewhere in early August. So if you live in the Northeast, I think you can still get a harvest off of this tree in August as well. Uh, you may be able to push it even earlier if you are in points further south that get a lot more heat than I do. Now I would give this flavor profile as a figgy honey mission type. So if you've ever had a black mission fig from a grocery store, they're very common. I think this has better flavor than the normal black mission. Uh, it's a little more honey flavored. It's a little more syrupy. It's really nice and it's different than any of the other figs in this list. So to give you that unique, more figgy classic fig taste, this is I think a really good one to get. The sixth fig on my list that is an absolute must have is the Smith fig tree. And I'm standing way back here because I just want you to see how amazingly vigorous this tree is. It's only been in ground for two seasons and it's an absolute beast. It's also one of the most prolific fig trees that I own. It just puts out fruit like nobody's business. It's crazy. And this is a very well-known, well-respected heirloom fig in the South. And that's because it's pretty good in the rain, especially for how flavorful it is. Now, now for me, this is an early August fig. I'm going to expect it sometime in the first week of August to harvest my first fruits off of this tree. So again, uh, points further south, you may be able to get something off this tree in July, uh, but this is still firmly in that August ripening time frame. If you live in places with shorter summers, like the Northeast, the Mid-Atlantic, and warmer parts of the Midwest. Now the flavor profile of this, I think it is a strawberry syrup. And when I say strawberry syrup, I mean uh, it really just tastes like strawberries. It's not, it's not incredibly complex, but it has a delicious sweet strawberry flavor and it drips that strawberry syrup from the eye. When it's perfectly ripe, it's just a pool of jam and it is so incredible. I just love this fig and a lot of them tend to ripen at once. So this is a fig tree that you can go out even when it's um, not fully mature and you may be able to harvest 10 to 20 figs in one day if the weather is right. Now for those of you with shorter summers, uh, this is getting close to what you can probably grow. So if you live in places very far north like New England or you start getting into the upper Midwest, you may not be able to grow a whole lot of the figs that I list from here on out unless you have some type of greenhouse or you can give them um, some type of head start because you really want these figs to ripen when it's at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer to really get that good quality uh, sugary taste. Now we're going to begin getting into the mid to later season figs. And number seven on my list is one of my absolute favorites and that is White Madeira number one. Uh, White Madeira number one is a fig that will start becoming more difficult to grow if you live in a very rainy summer place like I do uh, because they will tend to attract bugs when it gets rainy. However, if you get a few days of dry, these figs are absolutely phenomenal. Now for me, this is a mid to late August fig, um, somewhere around maybe August 15th to August 30th in that time frame. If you're in the Northeast or the Mid-Atlantic, this may start pushing you into September if all the stars align. You probably can still get figs off of this tree. They taste really good if it's in ground, uh, definitely if it's in containers and you give it a bit of a head start by bringing it in and out. Uh, in, the early f uh, in the early spring when frosts are still happening to get some green growth on it and keep it protected. Now the flavor profile of this fig is absolutely phenomenal. I would call this strawberry preserves. And this is different than the strawberry syrup flavor that I, give, uh, that I gave you for, uh, for Smith. While Smith is a very nice strawberry syrup flavored tree, this is like eating thick, rich strawberry preserves right out of a jar. It is extremely, extremely thick and rich and jammy. Just a total knockout. So it's different enough from Smith that I'm okay with having this Adriatic type in my list as well. Because to me, it's an absolute must have. I actually prefer this to Black Madeira. The eighth fig tree on my list is probably the variety that I've raved more about than any other fig that I own. And that is the I-258 or the Italian 258. This is probably my absolute favorite all around fig. It, I, I have to, I'm almost out of microphone cord to try and give you the full uh, scope and scale of this tree. 
just how massive it is and how prolific it is, it just grows like no other fig. And the figs are huge. They can easily be 60 to 70 grams a piece, just monsters. And the flavor is just out of this world. Now, when it comes to ripening, if all the stars align, this is a mid to late August ripener for me. So I can be picking figs off of this tree probably by the latter half of August. So that's going to really be pushing it for you if you're in the Northeast or the Midwest and you're trying to grow these planted in ground. However, this is an excellent variety for a container if you can give it a head start. Now, when it comes to the flavor, this may be one of my best, most uh, complex figs. This tastes like if you were to take maple syrup, pure, rich, dark maple syrup, and then lightly simmer it on the stove, and then put in fresh, perfectly delicious strawberries, and cook it down until you achieve this mapley strawberry mix, and then you blend it all together into one homogenous syrup. It's so complex, it's so delicious, and it just drips with honey from the eye. And when you cut it open, it's just this amazing pool of, of, of syrup. It's just, it's absolutely incredible. It's probably my favorite fig when it is perfectly ripened. Now it's challenging to grow because it does have an open eye and rain and cool nights make it burst like nobody's business and uh, SWD just loves it. So you do need consecutive dry days to ripen it and you want to bag all of these with organza bags to maximize the amount that you can harvest. But if you have dry summers, um, this is absolutely incredible. And it is one that every gardener that can grow it should grow it. Now we're going to start getting into our firmly late season figs. This is Col de Dom Blanc. And you've probably heard me rave about Col de Doms for years now. They're probably my favorite family of figs. And I think Col de Dom Blanc is probably the best out of all of them in terms of flavor. However, it's also one of the latest. And we got a very rare April hard freeze here earlier in the year. That set the whole tree back, it burned it back, it, it cooked it and because it was already leafed out. So it set me back probably about six weeks and because of that, I haven't been able to ripen many figs off of this tree. However, when the stars do align, this, this tree just pumps out tons of fruit. It's incredibly prolific, as you can see, there's just fruits on every node. It's also a fairly vigorous grower. Some people say coldenoms don't grow well on their own roots. I disagree, all of mine grow very well, regardless of variety. Now for me, here in North Carolina, if everything goes according to plan, this is probably a Labor Day harvest for me to get the first figs, and I can harvest these all throughout September. So it's firmly in the later season, if you live in the Northeast, you will struggle to grow this. It probably won't work out for you well in ground. Uh, it will work out in containers if you can give them a head start. And they're just so good, I strongly recommend you give it a try. It's worth the effort. Now, as for flavor, this has possibly one of the most unique textures of any fig I've ever grown. I would call it fig cake. It's like biting into a cake, almost like a pound cake that tastes like a fig. It's so thick and rich. It's just incredible. It's even better if you put them in the fridge to fully chill because they get so firm. It's like biting into a black hole. They're just absolutely incredible. And they have a wonderful, complex, mixed berry flavor. I would say some kind of an amalgamation between a raspberry, a strawberry, and a blackberry, more yielding towards the darker intensity of the blackberry. They're just incredible. When they're perfectly ripe, they are a 10 out of 10. You will struggle to find a better tasting fig than this when they're properly ripened and they ripen at the right time of the year for you. There's a very poorly ripened uh, fig right here, but I can at least show you the texture of the Col de Dom. Uh, the skin's getting kind of tough here uh, because we're in the middle of November, but it is just a very thick, rich, and jammy fig. Uh, they look much better than this when they ripen in the heat. They're almost purple. I'll try and give it a taste. Mmm. Oh, that's still incredible. It's amazing how even ripening this late in November, it's still delicious and so thick and, and jammy. Mmm. This tastes like a strawberry blackberry. Just amazing. And the tenth and final fig on my list that pretty much every fig grower should at least give a try is Black Madeira. And this is one that I'm really recommending just based on legend alone. There's so much hype about this fig that everybody really should 
give it a shot. Now the downside about Black Madeira is it is one of the most difficult figs to grow. It is very late season and it's very temperamental. The minute nights get cool or the figs get wet, they tend to explode. So this is not a very rain resistant fig. That's a reason why after three seasons, I still have it in the container. I'm not going to bother planting this in ground. However, when you do get good figs off of this tree, it is very good. Now for me on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, this is probably a first week of September, uh, first fig harvest for me. I was actually able to get the first fig off of this tree the last week of August, but it was pretty small, uh, probably half the size of what it should be. So this is probably firmly a September 1st to September 7th fig for me. So if you live in a cooler climate than I do, this is definitely a challenge. However, if you can container it and give it a head start, it is doable. People do grow this fig in Pennsylvania and they love it. So. Uh, it's not out of the question for people that live as far north as New England. Now, when it comes to flavor, I'm going to call this a mixed berry syrup flavor, just like an amalgamation of berries, almost with some molasses in a very uh, syrupy interior. When it's ripened, it looks very similar to an Italian 258, except uh, the flavor is a little bit darker and the figs are not as large. So if you like Italian 258, you will probably like Black Madeira. I personally like Italian 258 better than Black Madeira. However, a lot of people disagree and they prefer Black Madeira to Italian 258. So you really need to try them both. It's a personal preference, but it's one that if you can grow it, uh, it's become much easier to find and much more affordable. So give it a shot. And if it doesn't work out for you, you could always sell the tree. And there you have it. 10 different fig varieties that you can build an entire complete collection around where none of the flavors are redundant and you can have all 10 varieties and be completely satisfied that you're not overdoing it without having to collect dozens of trees like I did. Now again, for all of you hardcore fig collectors out there, be aware that these are not necessarily my favorite varieties. For instance, I love all of the Col de Dom varieties, but they'd be incredibly redundant if I had six Caldadoms because they all taste very similar. Most people don't want to collect dozens of trees. So the point of this video is to give you incredible diversity while still getting great flavor on every single fig. So everybody, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, please make sure to hit that like button and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we upload more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in my garden, they're all linked in the video description in my Amazon storefront and also so check out my spread shop while you're there for custom merch. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. So Dale's mom and I just got back from a vacation to Florida and we were away for a whole week. Dale had to spend a week with the grandparents. So we forgot to pack him with his vitamins. So we always have to give him his vitamin to keep his hair nice and shiny, gentle, gentle, Gentle. Oh no, he's drooling everywhere. Oh, that was very good, Dale. And it used to be that Dale's mom and I hated coming home after vacation, but we missed him so much we were actually looking forward to it. So when you get yourself a Dale, it's going to ruin your trip because you're going to want to come home as soon as you leave because you can't be without the Dale. He's such a good boy.